All right, it's good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Monday night team call. Uh, this is going to be a doozy. I've been waiting for this for uh, quite a while, uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. First, just a few housekeeping notes. Really, start looks like a you know a lot of people are starting to sell today. Uh, you know, our our sales cycle starts today. Um, excited to see names on the leaderboard. I saw Chuck Knox on there knocking some big time numbers on there. Uh, Dovner and and the, and the rest of the crew out there making sales. But uh, really excited about this call. Good evening, everybody. My name is Eric Bowling. Uh, I'm calling you tonight from Gulf Breeze. I'm actually home and uh, not on the road. But uh, really, like I said, really excited to, uh, to talk to you tonight um, about building the business, um, making sales, who we're looking for, that kind of thing. We've got a lot of new people on the business uh, this evening. And... I think this is a perfect opportunity for the brand new person, actually even the veterans, the veterans that, that are looking for the right type of person to bring into their business. Because as you know, uh, this business is twofold. You can go out and make sales, make you know three sales a week or more, whatever it may be for you, part-time. Um, you can be full-time. There's always a place at the table here for you. Um, we are here to support you and help you and guide you. Uh, where you can be very profitable in this business. And for most of the people, you, you know, uh, that are on this call and certainly that have joined our organization, they're looking for something even, bit, you know, a bit bigger to build a business, to, to drive that passive income. And the great thing about what we do here is it doesn't take a ton of people to get a lot of, uh, of income built up. You know, this is not where you have to have hundreds or even thousands of people. We're talking a handful of the right people that we can help mold into to new leaders, to new builders, and kind of teach this business and kind of go through, uh, go through exactly what we've done and duplicate. So I don't want to take up a whole lot of time because I'm really proud to introduce um, one of the guys uh, that has been a very impactful part of our organization, uh, Christian Pounder. Um, phenomenal story. Uh, if, if you want to build a business where maybe you're brand new on, on this call and you're trying to decide, you know, can I do this business? Is it for me? Do I have enough belief in myself? Should I believe in the system that, they're, that these guys are talking to me about? There couldn't be a better example of somebody that has started from literally nothing and built himself over the course of about three years. I'm going to say call it three years, Christian, just give or take, uh, that, that I've gotten to know, uh, to know you. And just the met, and not only the income. And so the income's great. And we're all here to make money. Let's be very clear about making money. That's what we're here for. But it gives me that much more pleasure to watch somebody change their entire lifestyle and, and create a path for where the future has absolutely no limits. And this guy, I, I, when, when we talk about Equus, we talk about what, how we want to build and who we want to build the organization with. Man, I would, I would kill to have 100 Christian pounders because we dominate the world. I'm not going to – Christian, I, again, I'm super proud of you, all that you've accomplished, and I know that the deep, dark truth is that uh, you ain't even started yet. Like, this is your starting point, and you're realizing and self-developing to realize that what got you to where you are now isn't where it's going to – you know, isn't what it's going to take to get you to that next level, but I know you already know that because you have learned to self-develop and stuff. So without further ado, uh, Christian Pounder, I would love if you would just introduce yourself and kind of tell me your journey – and what drove you and how you kind of gutted it out and the realities of this business and how it's affected you and, and uh, talk about the results that it's actually given you. And I'll shut up and get out, get out of your way. Eric, hey, buddy. Hey, team. Uh, let me say this. I am uh, very excited to be on this call. I'm honored to be able to uh, pour into you guys. And if, and if it's just one that gets something out of this, uh, I've done my job. So, yes, yeah, so my name is Christian. I am uh, 29 years old. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I am from Mobile, Alabama. That's actually where I am right now. I'm visiting some family, so it's been pretty cool to catch up. Uh, we're staying out here at the Grand Hotel. But, um, yeah, man, let me say this. I certainly didn't wake up one day and have a dream as a kid of doing something like this. You know, I don't think anybody does, realistically. Um, my my story's probably like most people on this call, Um you know, majority of my life was, was shaped and molded through adversity, uh, through hard times, through setbacks. Um, I was one of those kids that I was a late bloomer, um, looked over a lot, uh, grew up, know what it feels like to lose. Uh, so 
for me, um, when Equus came across my path, I was really at a point in my life to where I was looking for something different. Um, you know, I barely finished high school, so my credentials in the corporate world were less than desirable. So I wasn't somebody that you would look at and say, man, that guy's going places. That guy's going to be somebody, you know. But, uh, Eric, for me, you can't really look at somebody and see what they have inside of them. And that's something that I had, and that's a big reason why I've been able to uh, do this business is because i got something burning inside me um, that really fuels me on and, and pulls me through those hard times, man. So came across Equus. I was working at a nursery making 10 bucks an hour in Loxley, Alabama, working my tail off. Uh, meet a guy named Nate Maddox uh, through some amazing, uh, you know, circumstances. Meet Nate. Nate introduced me to the business. I remember when I was talking to Nate, Eric, it's so crazy to think about, man, how far you can go in just a short amount of time when you really commit to growing as an individual. But I asked Nate, I said, Nate, I asked him what he did. He's like, I'm in life insurance. I'm, you know. Pretty casual. I was like, is there money in it? And he's like, well, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so I was like, that's cool. And I didn't ask him anything else. He calls me a few months later. He asked me if I want to make some extra income. Um, you know, I'm making 10 bucks an hour, granted. So, you know, if I could have told him, Nate, that's a really stupid question. <laughs> Absolutely, I want to make some extra money. So I go over to his apartment. Um, the guy's got circles on his board. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I just know that I'm working in 105-degree weather, uh, middle of summer in August, and I am not um, liking it that much, right? Great attitude, hard worker, um, but, I was, you know, the job was pretty rough. So Nate pays me 10 bucks an hour as an assistant. Didn't take long to find out that I uh, wasn't very good at that, uh, wasn't my passion, you could say. And so uh, – dropped the ball on many occasions. I'm pretty sure Nate probably thought about firing me a hundred times. You know, he must have just saw something in me, man. I'm so grateful for Nate. Let me say that for, for sticking around long enough until I got this thing. Don't ever count anybody out, man. Don't count anybody out because, you know, when I got started in this, I was terrible. I was awful. I didn't really believe in myself. Um, but I'll tell you what I had, man, and I'll tell you what a lot of people probably have on this call. If you're on this call, you got a burning desire to be somebody, man. you got a burning desire to do something big and special. Um, and this industry, and Equus Financial especially, can take that desire and that willingness to do what it takes to win and get you a system to plug into that will be able to, to develop a skill set to put you in a position to earn a multiple six-figure income within three short years. I mean – I'm so thankful to be here. Uh, I'm thankful to my mentors, the people that brought me in and coached me. Uh, you can't do this alone, guys. I'll say that. you got to have people in business with you um, that will support you and help you in them tough times. But, Eric, I don't know, man, if you got anything in particular to ask me or talk to me about, I'd be glad to do it, buddy. So, yeah, I, I kind of want people to get an idea of the path that, that you took. So, your first, I'm not talking about, you know, when you're working with Nate as an assistant. By the way, Nate Maddox, if you guys ever get a chance to be around that guy, probably one of the best trainers in the country at, at appointment setting. Stuff. So you are blessed to, to be under his tutelage for sure. Maybe walk me through some of the, the, the struggles maybe you had in the first, uh, you know, three months of being an agent. And, and you know, maybe the struggles of where you were as a builder when you're trying to build your organization. And then, maybe fast forward the next year and then the following year. I'd love to see – I mean, I know you, you made over $200,000 last year in 2019, so couldn't be more proud of you for that. But walk me through the, that first three to six months, good, bad, ugly, whatever. Man, and this, honestly, not enough people talk about this time frame just in general, and this is the most important time frame um, that you will have doing this because this is going to be the toughest time that you're going to go through. This is going to be the hardest stretch of time as far as adversity, setbacks, defeats, disappointments, nervousness, anxiety, overwhelming feelings. This is going to be it. The first six months, the first three months, six months, depending on how fast you get it. It took me a year, Eric. So, dude, my first year, I remember the first time I went to dial, Eric, I was so nervous. My stomach hurt so bad. I, I kept having to use the restroom. I'm not kidding, dude. It was that bad. I was so scared. 
And when I finally got somebody on the phone, I was happy when they weren't answering because I was like, whew, man, at least I can say I'm doing something but not having to, you know, talk to somebody. Somebody finally answered. My voice was so shaky. <laughs> I'm not laughing thinking about it, but my voice was so shaky, Eric, that if I would have been on the other end of that line, I would have been scared to death of even allowing somebody like me to come to their house. I mean, I was so bad. When I finally called enough people to get good enough to set an actual appointment, that was a whole nother monster, buddy, because now I've got to go sit in front of somebody. I've always been good with people. I've always been a, had a great attitude, you know, very good at, you know, uh, connecting with people. I just, I have the wrong mindset about what we were doing. So I went into a house thinking I had to sell them something. Buddy, let me tell you something. When I got out of that mindset of going in there with the mindset of, like, I have to convince these people that this is important to them, I took off in sales, dude. But that first three to six months, what I struggled with most was making dials. I was scared to do it. And then, two, being able to help somebody instead of sell somebody. Hey, can you – Kind of elaborate on that because I think some people might not understand what you're saying right there. So kind of explain what what you mean by that. As far as like helping somebody instead of selling somebody. Exactly. Okay. So let me. First of all, let me say this: any problem you have in this business can be cured with activity. You want to get good on the phone, make about a thousand phone calls. You want to get good in a house in an appointment to where you're closing the heck out of these people and they didn't even know what the heck you just did psychologically to them run about a 1,000 or 2,000 appointments. Activity is going to cure everything. So in the beginning, I didn't have a lot of appointments because my activity was low. Let me tell you what this does. This puts you in a position to have to, sell, to, have to make a sale every single time you sit with somebody. See, I run 15 appointments now, Eric, so I go into a house, and if I get a feeling that somebody doesn't care or doesn't want this or want to talk to me, buddy, I'm out of there so fast it will make your head spin. But the reason I have that leverage and that power is because I'm going to sit with enough people that genuinely care about it to where I don't have to sell it. They just want it, and I help them with it. But see, when you run two, three, four, five appointments a week, and that's all you're running consistently, you're not allowing yourself to sit with those people that really care about it. You're sitting with the people, and then you have to sell them because you got to pay your phone bill or whatever, and you've got to make every single sale. So then you go into selling them on people that really aren't even interested or don't care about it like you thought they did. Then you maybe strong arm them into buying just because they want to get you out of the house. Then they cancel on you. So the key in this business to winning and making good sales and helping people the right way is set the numbers up in your favor to be able to sit with the people that actually care about it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And you know that actually feeds right into – recruiting and building I mean you can't you can't build a big a big organization if that's what you want by talking to one or two people a week you know what I mean and, and, and look hey again we're not telling everybody to go out and be a Christian pounder we're not telling everybody they got there like I said there's a place at the table for everybody the person wants to make one sale a week or a month but if you want to make consistent good money and build a consistent good business which by the way the same skills that Christian uses in the house and, and dialing and talking to people, the same skills that, that the builders, like you know, somebody like myself uses. It's just the, the amount of activity, the amount of appointments, the amount of conversations that we have to talk about the opportunity, whether it's the opportunity of building the business, it's the opportunity to help a family in, in a house you know, that requested some, uh, some mortgage protection or filing service, whatever it may be. So, uh, Christian, I am a numbers guy, and I was just told by your guy, by your manager, <laughs> by Nate, that you had a pretty good month last year. So you, I mean, last uh, in January, you deposited thirty-four thousand bucks into your account in January. So for those of you out there who think that um, that this is easy, well, it's not. It's simple. This is a very simple business. But this is something that Christian just kept going with, right? I mean, that's something you just, you never quit. There, there's only two reasons you won't make money in this business. And there are only two, and I think you'd agree, and tell me if you disagree, that if you just don't work, if you're lazy, you know, or you quit. Because at some, at some point, when you finally, when the light bulb goes off, if, if everything clicks and you understand the business, 
Christian, I promise you, because I remember visiting you guys in that apartment a couple of years ago and shaking my head like, oh, boy. <laughs> and then, man, what a, what a delight it is to have you as one of the, you know, just the brightest stars in the whole company right now. So, uh, hey, you know what? Let's, let's talk about um, – Maybe your mind as as you're changing. So you've kind of got this thing figured out. You're you're moving along. You, you're starting to make pretty good money. You know, without what outside of the money, and I got it. That's super important. What has this business done for you personally, as as a, as a man, as a husband, as a leader? I mean, as a you know, kind of kind of tell me what it what what this has done for you as a as an individual. You know what, Eric? You said you said something that's my favorite thing about this business. The money is great, but let me tell you something. The money is strictly a byproduct of the value that I've been able to bring to others, and that comes from personal growth and development. Let me tell you something. Personal growth and development can only be achieved and maintained by constant exposure to adversity, being uncomfortable, being unsure, learning how to win, learning how to get knocked down and get back up again and again and again and again. See, here's where people fail. People fail because they think that success is the opposite direction of failure. See, Eric, success is on the other side of failure. That's the only destination that success is, is on the other side of failure. When I learn that, I take every adversity, defeat, setback, buddy, I put it in my repertoire of how to win. You got to have a burning desire to win. See, quitting will, will, a major cause of failure is quitting, right? But it's deeper than that. People don't quit because things get tough. People quit because they don't have a big enough reason to stick it out when things get tough. See, I wanted to be somebody. I grew up my whole life losing, man. So when I felt what it felt like to actually win, what it actually felt like to set a goal and achieve it and to go through adversity and to get my teeth kicked in and get up until I achieved that goal, I never respected myself until I developed the habit of finishing something I started. That's where I was my whole life. That's why I was making 10 bucks an hour working somewhere, not because I was a bad person. It's because I developed this nasty little habit of quitting. So this business for me, man, it has developed me as a person by having to constantly overcome things, and I've become very valuable. I've become somebody that can look in the mirror and know that I'm tougher than probably 99% of the people or the people that I'm surrounded with on a daily basis. That's not saying anything about anybody. I'm just saying this business will make you fight, and it will make you claw your way and find out ways to win. And what that does, though, Eric, is it, 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 it spreads itself in other areas of your life, not just business. So you start being a better husband. You start being a better uh, communicator in general, a better father, a better friend. Like, you become valuable as a person. See, the $34,000 that happened in January, all that is as an accumulated effect of the last three years of the value that I've added to myself and brought. Does that make sense? That's exactly – heck, yeah, man. That is exactly right. And, and – <sighs> I cannot stress enough. We talked about I was talking to a new, a new uh, a lady in, in uh, Southern California today that, that came on board, and we talked about that. She's got a big personal development background in, in you know sales, and we talk about this business. In fact, she's I know she's on the call, and uh, man, you know, I just that's all this is about. That's all this is about. So let me ask you this: So where do you? realistically like where i mean you've done so much in a short amount of time where where do you see yourself in the next year you know maybe uh so the, summer 2021 where can we see christian kind of what's he look like so i'm honestly man i got big goals and i and i aim high buddy because if you aim low you're you're doomed aim high aim high higher than you think you can achieve because let me tell you what's going to happen dude Resources are going to start coming to you. You have the ability to get on the right track by placing in your, in your path a, a good vision. So my goals for this year is $400,000 in income. Eric, man, I've been able to double in income every year in this business. I don't plan on stopping. I know that I have to do different things to get there. And so what I'm doing, I'm starting to build, uh, you know, at a, at a high level. I'm starting to develop ways to market and recruit. Uh, hired an assistant. She's on this call, Brittany. She's incredible. 
Um, man, I, I want to hit the equity bonus this year, man. I want to be RM by April. Uh, so, buddy, I, I got big goals, and I don't plan on slowing down. Excellent. All right. Well, so for the last couple minutes, if you don't mind, because I know there's a lot of – there's people on here that are brand new and like literally just got started in the last couple of days, and there's people on, on this call that maybe they've been sitting on the fence a little bit, and for whatever reason. And, you know, we, we, we're big on looking for part-timers. We're big on looking for other people that want to build. What would be some advice for somebody? And you've got to step out of your shoe, of, the, of the Christian Pounder shoes now a little bit, I guess, and remember what it's like to be brand new. What advice? couple things maybe, not, nothing huge, just some, some little bit of advice you give a brand new person either considering the business or literally just getting started. Well, Eric, I think about where I came from every day. That's what fuels me, buddy. I'm not just running to something. I'm running from something. I know where I was. I'll never want to go back there. So that dry, I wake up every day scared to death, buddy. I got a fire inside me and behind me, man. So – it don't matter. Let me say this to you, man. It don't matter where you come from. I came from nothing, man. It don't matter what you've done in your life up to this point. I've done a lot of bad stuff. I put myself in a lot of bad situations. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not a saint, man. There was a time to where you wouldn't even recognize me, man. That person's dead, though. But it don't matter where you come. It don't matter who liked you as a kid. It don't matter who your daddy is. It don't matter who your teacher is. None of that stuff matters. You understand? Everything that happens to us in life, are not, they're so common. Everybody's got a story. There's a million reasons not to do something. All you need is one. You don't need a million of them. Everything that happens in life that's bad happens to everybody. Nobody's story. You could, man, you could go somewhere around the corner and find somebody who's got it worse than you and a, and a worse story than you. It does not matter what, it, what happens to you. That's not going to want to determine the outcome of your life, folks. What's going to matter is what are you going to do about it? Not many opportunities that I've seen come in life again and again and again. What are you going to do about it? Like, I'm a perfect example, man. I, I took this opportunity, and I took the things that were happening in my life, and instead of a, an excuse, I made it my reason, man. That's awesome. And that's true. So, you know, and for me, I'll just tell people, you know what, let's just get started. I think some of the most important things you can do, and I'm sure you did this as well, is in the beginning, you talk to Nate. Because, well, Nate's the one who brought you in the business. But for anybody else out there, it's communication. It's about reaching out. Because here's the thing, you know, uh, if, we're, if, if we're somebody like myself or Nate or Dave or Chuck or, or all – I don't want to leave anybody out. Lots of people on this call that are actually building and, and, and moving at a high level. Um, we are looking for people to raise their hand, to reach out, to, to make that call, to text, hey, I need to know how to do this. So that would be my, my advice. When you get started, make sure you're communicating because I, the, the best advice I ever got, and you'll hear a lot on these calls and when you meet me in person is, and you said it earlier, man, you can't do this business by yourself. You just can't. And you certainly can't do it your way and be successful. Everything's been tried. We have the system. We have the platforms. We have, um, I mean, Equus has, has got deep pockets and invests in us. Jared Ewing invests heavily with staff and resources and websites and stuff like that. Leverage everything, but talk to whoever brought you into this business. And if they're new, talk to their manager, which is your manager, and get the right advice, the right path talk a lot. We talk, Christian, buddy, how many times do you take a call super early in the morning or crazy late at night from, a, from, a, from a, you know, an agent? It's part of the gig, well, right? I mean, listen, if, if, and here's the thing, like, if, if you're doing the right thing, let's say you're brand new, okay, don't be afraid to go out and make a huge mess. Don't be afraid to, to fail big. You need to because – you can really let me let me tell you this. This is big. If you if you listen to this, nobody wants this to take forever to get good at. Like if I ask everybody, how long do you want it to take for you to be able to just be lights out in the house and on the phone? Nobody in the right mind would say, man, I want it to take forever. But see, here's the key. It's going to be up to you. How fast do you want to accelerate that learning curve? So, like in other words, 
what price are you willing to pay in activity to accelerate that learning tur- curve to get good at it quicker? That comes from getting started, like you said. Just, just make that phone call. Make that first phone call. Get hung up on. Go sit with somebody and be, just be awful in the house. Call somebody after each appointment. I called Nate after every single appointment. Drove him nuts. I was like, dude, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? What could I have done better? But you know what that did? There was only so many situations that I ran into. There's only so many situations you're going to run into. So as you learn to master each situation, eventually you're, not, you're going to run into something that you know what to do in that situation. The key is how long do you want it to take? No, that's spot on. That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, there is, the cool thing is, that, yeah, absolutely, there's a learning curve here, especially if you're not from this business or really don't even have a sales or business background. But if you plug in, if you absorb and live and eat and breathe this business just for a short right. time and just communicate because, you know, again, here's another thing you hear all the time. This business is caught, not taught. Don't go sit in a corner and read underwriting guides and all the, 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 the technicalities of all this stuff. Go talk to people. Go talk to them. That's it. So any, any final words, advice, I'm going to just give this to you, um, and then I'm going to shut up and let, I'll just let you in the call, man. You've done a great job. Again, Christian, super proud of you. Um, I, you're a shining star that's going to be just lighting up the leaderboard in, in sales and recruiting, and I know you're going to build your business the same way that you've uh, built your sales uh, processes over the years. So I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to let you close out this call for just a couple minutes. Yeah, so listen, man, I'm let me say this, dude. Without God I wouldn't be nothing, man. Like you you like it's really easy to sit back and look at yourself and say, Man, you're so great, you're so successful. But I understand that I wouldn't be anywhere without people like you, without people like Nate, without the managers like we have. So your only shot at getting big and doing something is just be humble. Be humble, be coachable, be teachable. The only thing that kept me going in the beginning was a good attitude, man. I had a good attitude, buddy. I had a great attitude, and um, I wanted to do something big. That's what kept me going in the beginning. And let me say this to you. I had to develop the capacity to dream. Like at first, it was very simple. I wanted to get out of the nursery making 10 bucks an hour. The next thing was, man, I want to make four or five grand a month. I'd be something. But see, once you start developing yourself and your capacity to think, your vision starts to grow. So my vision right now, there's no way I could have have had the capacity to have that vision three years ago. You're only got, you can never out earn your self-worth. Barry talks about it, but it's very profound when you understand what that means. Like you have to develop the capacity to dream big and that comes with time. Okay. You can't cheat the system. Let me say this. The longest road to success here at Equus is through shortcuts. You can't shortcut this stuff. You can't fool nobody. You, you, can't, you can't fool nobody. It takes time and it takes effort. And also, just because you're doing a lot doesn't mean that you're necessarily getting a lot done, like Eric was talking about, reading the underwriting guides, sorting out your leads alphabetically, you know, planning out your route before you even start making appointments, wanting to print out every single application, wanting to know every single quoting tool, wanting to do all this and all that. Let me say this. That makes you feel good because you're, you think you're moving in the direction and so you satisfy that, that need for knowing you should be doing something and kill that anxiety. But, buddy, that ain't making you a lick of money, okay? Just because you're doing a lot doesn't mean that you're getting a lot done. Instead of working hard, like, be efficient. Like, work hard, but be very efficient because that's the goal. Nobody wants to work seven days a week. Like, be efficient with your time, but be doing the right activities. There's, there's a few activities that pay us money here. Making phone calls, focus really, really, really strong on getting good at that, setting appointments. Once you get really, really good at setting appointments, focus really, really, really hard on getting good in the home. As a personal producer, if you focus on those two things, everything else is going to work itself out. You're going to figure your schedule out. You're going to figure the underwriting out by making mistakes. You're going to figure everything else out. 
But, see, a lot of times people get that backwards. They focus on all the other stuff, the other 90% of stuff that really doesn't even pay them on the front end. And they give less attention and the least attention to the, to the 10% that pays them the most. Focus on the right things. If you don't know what the right things are, listen to this phone call again <laughs> and talk to your manager. Make phone calls, make a bunch of dials, go run a lot of appointments. Those are the two things you really need to get good at. If you're recruiting, talk to your manager about certain strategies, but all it is is the same concept. Talk to a lot of people. You're going to get good at interviewing. You're going to be terrible at first, but then once you develop the skill of communication, you're going to have that forever, and nobody can take that from you, and that's what's going to pay you long term. So, guys, if I can leave you with anything, don't let this learning – like, don't let this knowledge strictly lead to learning. In other words, don't take everything I'm saying and just put it in your memory bank and in your reservoir of knowledge and say, man, that was great. That sounded really good. Do you know what they call somebody who knows what to do and doesn't do it and chooses not to do it? Now, it may seem like a nasty word, but they call somebody who knows what to do and doesn't do it a fool, right? Like, I'd rather not know what to do then know what to do and not do it. So, so instead of letting your, this knowledge lead to learning, like let this knowledge lead to action, right? Let this knowledge lead to a plan of action that puts you back out there and changes the, ter- the trajectory of your life, especially this year. That's what's going to matter is what you do with the information. Because if you don't apply it, you're just somebody who knows what to do and not going to do it and even, and even sadder than you would be if, you go out there and fail. So that's all I got, guys. Well, I got a lot more, but I'm not going to keep you all night. But listen, man, if anybody wants to reach out to me, you can get my number. I'm willing to help anybody. I love and respect you guys that are out there fighting. And uh, I can't wait to reconvene in August and see where we're at. But, man, be consistent. Keep getting out there. And, man, never stop, never give up. Love you guys. Bye.